to introduce to you tonight our, keynote, our commencement speaker, Corey Hahn. Corey is an interesting and inspirational young man, and I had the pleasure of spending some time with him a few weeks ago and hearing about his story. Corey is a highly recognized high school basket, or baseball player. He earned honors through the LA Times High School Player of the Year for baseball and was named Mr. California in 2010. Corey, unfortunately, had a tragic event sliding into second base against New Mexico in the first weekend of his freshman season at Arizona State University in 2011. Through tireless effort and dedication, Corey has been working his way toward his ultimate goal of walking again. The National Association of Academic Advisors for Athletics presented Corey with the Wilma Rudolph Student Athlete Achievement Award on June 8th in 2013. It is given annually to student athletes who have overcome great personal, academic, and or emotional odds to achieve academic success while participating in intercollegiate athletics. Corey was one of the five student athletes to earn the award in 2013 and joins a prestigious group of former winners, including former Rutgers football player Eric Legrand. Corey continues to be an active member of the baseball team after his injury, attending practices, games, and events as a student coach. He graduated with a degree from W.P. Carey School of Business at ASU. The Arizona Diamondbacks recently selected Corey in the 34th round of the 2013 Major League Draft on June 8th, and he is currently employed with the team as an assistant in their scouting department and a member of the Scout Ahead Development Program. It is my pleasure to introduce to you and to turn the time over to Corey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As you guys just heard, my name is Corey Hahn. And before I get going, I'd like to just thank the Primavera leadership for allowing me the opportunity to come speak to you guys tonight. And also to tell you guys how, uh, how humbling it is to be a part of your guys' special night. So a little bit about myself. As you just heard a little bit about me, but uh, I grew up in Southern California. And I've been a baseball kid my whole life. I grew up around it. Both my mom and dad played baseball and softball, and it's in my it's in my bloodlines. And you know, just a little over five years ago, I was sitting exactly where you guys are, and everything was going great. I'm fortunate enough to graduate through high school and earn a scholarship to come play baseball at Arizona State. As I came here, things were going really well. As you heard, I was uh, as a freshman, starting you know starting for the team, and suffered a catastrophic injury. Uh, leaving me paralyzed from the neck down. One moment, I'm sitting there, moving around as, as free as can be, and the next moment, I'm going into surgery and I can't move. Next day, I wake up and I have doctors telling me all the things I can't, can't do, how my life will never be the same, and you can imagine the, the emotional toll it took on myself and my family as we're hearing these things being told to us. I look at it, I look back on it now and I look at it as more as a challenge rather than as a setback more than anything. Um, you know, brief little thing, I went through 75 days in the hospital to basically, to basically relearn life. You know, the simple tasks that we don't even think about every day. You know, putting on a shirt again, being able to move around again, being able to feed yourself again. I wasn't able to do those things and I had to relearn how to do every little thing that we take for granted every single day. And it was, it's, it's an emotional toll, and it was a grind, but uh, it was a challenge that ultimately I was ready to accept. After 75 days, I was able to come home, and I, I want to tell you guys a little story that ultimately led to where I got to today. It's a very simple story, a very a very simple story, but it's one that the more and more I tell it, the more and more it becomes of importance. 
when I got out of the hospital, my friends, they wanted to take me out to dinner for, to celebrate coming home and to be back with my family. And I was all for it. Very excited to go, and I forgot one thing. You know, when I got to the restaurant, I still couldn't feed myself. See, when I was in the hospital, a nurse fed me every single day, or a family friend, or my parents, and next thing you know, I'm sitting at this restaurant, and I still couldn't do it. And to me, it crushed me. Now, you may ask the, uh, the people in the audience or in the restaurant, they may think, man, this kid's got great friends, which I do, I really do. But to me, it was a, it was devastating. And I remember I came home and I was so, so emotional, so, so down that I told my parents that, look, it's, we're gonna figure this out. And I spent the next six days eating inside. I didn't go out, didn't leave my house one time. And I, I had a lot of food on the ground. I had a lot of food on my lap, but uh, ultimately was able to get, to figure it out a little bit, which, on the, the last day of the week, I had my dad, we went to a burger joint, and uh, for the first time since my accident, I held a burger. <laughs> I can't. And I can't tell you how emotional it was, how satisfying it was, <laughs> and how good that burger tasted. It was, uh, it was truly remarkable. But it taught me one really big thing that this life is a challenge, but if I set goals, and if I set goals for myself, and I work hard and I keep grinding at it, I'm gonna achieve those goals. And I tell you that story because it's what led me to here today, and it's, it's something that I think it's why I'm here to talk to you guys. I sit there and I realize that you guys are going, you guys just accomplished one of the biggest goals of your life. You're graduating high school, and it may not have been easy, and it may have been a struggle, but you guys all got to this point. And I, and I sit here and I, re I, I want to talk to you guys because you sit here, you set a goal for yourself, and you achieve that goal. And now it's a matter of what's next. What's the next thing on the list for you guys? And that's where, that's where it is for me. I sit here and I had so many, so many professionals, so many doctors, sorry if I, offend any of you doctors out there, but uh, tell me the things I couldn't do. Tell me the things I can't do. And yet, you know, you hear, you hear them tell you you can't live on your own again. You can't feed yourself. You can't drive. You can't go to school. You can't work. Well, I sit here five years later, able to feed myself, able to drive, I came back to school, I graduated with my degree in business in four years with my graduating class after missing a full year of school. And I've been working with Arizona Diamondbacks for a little over a year. And what all this has taught me and what I would like to relay to you guys today is that it doesn't matter what people tell you you can't do or the things you say you, that people say you can't do or achieve. Well, all that matters is what you want to do. What are the goals for you? For a lot of you, it might be going on to college, it might be starting a job, it might be starting a family. But these are all goals that you guys set and that it's, at the end of the day, it's only up to you whether or not you achieve those goals. You can have people telling you everything you want, telling you can't do this or you can't do that or you're not able to do this. But unless you don't think you can do it, then they can't control what, you, what your life's like and what you want to achieve in this life. And it's a very beautiful thing when you look at it that way, that you, when you realize that you're the one who's in control of your life. You're the one who dictates how hard you want to work for those goals, how hard you want to achieve what, you want to, what your goals are in life. And it's a really, a really remarkable thing when you realize that because there are going to be people who, like for instance, for myself, I was given the lowest, lowest limits you could possibly give in while being alive. And I'm sitting here today telling you that I blew past every single one of those limits. <laughs> and 
And it left me with the, with the answer that I don't know what my limits are. No one does. For, for me, for you, for anybody in here, you keep pushing yourself to keep moving forward and to keep grinding through everything you go through. And you'll realize that you'll never get to your limits because you're always going to be wanting more, always going to be able to achieve more. You're going to achieve one goal and you're going to realize, wow, I can achieve another goal and I can achieve another goal. For me, it was being able to put a shirt on, being able to get from one side of the room to the other. For you guys, it might be something completely different, but that's what makes us unique. You know, I want to tell you a quick, a quick statement that stays with me every single day. You know, I was, uh, I let a guy come into my life and learn a little bit about what I go through on a daily basis. And after seeing what I go through, he asked me the question that I've been, I have been waiting to be asked for a long time. And he goes, how do you keep fighting? And I sat there, I had a little smirk on my face because I already had the answer. And I looked at him right in the eye and I, I simply just said, how can I give up on something I truly believe will happen? And, and for me, that's going to be ultimately walking one day, and I promise you I'll get there. But I also, it's something that I want to relate to you guys that you can have all the goals that you want in life or all the motives to do anything you want in life. But it's, if you don't believe in yourself to keep to achieve those goals, to achieve what you want to be in life, then you're not going to get there. And then you're going to, everybody who, you're going to have people all in this room, your parents, your friends, your teachers, they can all be pointing you in the right direction and pushing you in the right direction. But if you don't believe in yourself, you'll never get to where you want to get to. But if you do believe in yourself, the possibilities are endless. Everything you want to achieve in life, you can achieve and, and, and more. And, and, and everything you want to do, you'll get there because you truly believe in yourself. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to achieve these goals overnight. And I'm living an example of that. It took, me, it took me a month to figure out how to put a shirt back on. It took me a year how to figure out how to drive, let alone six months to be strong enough to turn the wheel. You know, it, was, it took me two months to figure out how to use a phone again. And I'm 23 years old. I know how important my phone is. And you can, imagine, you can imagine going two months not being able to use it, having to have somebody else make the phone call for you. So I'm sitting here and I'm telling you, this, it'll take time. But if you persevere and if you work hard every single day to, achieve, to, to move forward, to keep pushing yourself forward, you'll get there. And I promise you that because I'm going to live an example of that. Now, along the lines of being, not being easy, it's, uh, you're going to face adversity in this life if you haven't already. You know, we all do. We all go through it, whether it's big or small. We all go through it. But if there's one thing that, coming from someone who goes through adversity every single day, the one thing I've learned is, is it's, it's not the adversity that defines who you are. It's how you handle it. And when you look at it that way, and it's a very beautiful thing, we're all going to be given some sort of difficulty. But it's up to us, uh, each, up to each and every one of you guys, how you handle it. And there's two ways to handle it. You can either go one way or the other. And it's amazing when you, put your, the, when you have the ball in your court, just how remarkable it is to be able to achieve the things you want to achieve and how possible it is. No matter what people tell you, I was given, like I mentioned, the lowest limits you could ever be given. But yet, I'm sitting here in front of you guys today achieving much more than I think anybody ever would have thought I would have. But I believed in myself, and I think that's something that I would love to relay to you guys, that you, as you guys go through these things, today, like I said, you achieved one of the greatest goals of your life. But now I challenge you. Tonight you close, you, you stop one chapter and you start another. And so I challenge you, what's next? What's the next thing on your list to keep you pushing forward, to keep you getting better and better? I know it doesn't stop here for any of you guys. And so I sit here and I sit here and I congratulate you guys, but I also challenge you because starting tonight, tomorrow, what's the next goal? What's the next thing on your list to achieve? And how do you make yourself a better person? And so as I sit here and I congratulate you guys, it's amazing. How, I, how you guys can achieve anything you want starting tonight, starting tomorrow. But the beauty about it is, is 
is you have all these people in these rooms, your family, your friends, your loved ones, your faculty, your staff, who are there to help you along the way, but they can only get you so far. The rest is up to you. But that's also a beautiful thing because you guys are the ones, no one can, tell, can stop you from achieving your goals except for yourself. And when you look at it that way, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to wake up every single day and want to, want to be better, want to be motivated to be better because at the end of the day, it's all up to you. And so I sit here and I, I want to extend one last congratulations because I've been here. I've been in your shoes. I know what it's like to, to have those long hours to get through school, the frustrating times, the the late nights, the times you want to give up, but you didn't, and that's why you guys are here today. That's why your loved ones are in the stands celebrating each and every one of you, because you kept pushing. You kept grinding through it, and that's where the challenge comes from. What's next? What's next on each and every one of your guys' list? I guarantee you guys dig deep down, and you guys dig deep enough, you'll get there, and I guarantee you, you'll, you'll get there, because I'm living proof of that. It's one thing I've realized as I've gone through my journey and I've, I've watched so many people go through theirs, we're all destined for greatness. It's big or small, one way or another. We're all unique people destined for greatness. And we all have the ability to be great, but we have to let ourselves be great. Only we have control over that. We have so many people showing us the way, showing us how it's done, but at the end of the day, we're the ones who have to jump. We're the ones who have to move forward and take control and, and do the work and put in the time and effort to achieve it. So I sit here in closing with one final congratulations to you guys, you know, the class of 2015. But I also want to thank you, not for listening to me, but you guys are setting an example. You, I, I've learned so much in so little time about Primavera High School. And you guys are setting an example for the future, for the people who are coming up next to be here. So they see you guys sitting in this, in this position, sitting here about to receive your diplomas, and it motivates them to want to be here for the class of 2016, 17, 18. They see you guys sitting here today, and they want to be in this exact spot. So you can imagine that they look up to you. And if they see you guys moving forward in life and, and achieving more and more and becoming great, they're going to be, want to become great. And it all starts through, pre, through the things you guys have gone through at Primavera, through your teachers who have helped you throughout this whole course, and everything you've done. You guys make a bigger impact than you really realize. You guys are setting a new trend. The online school, as you heard before, it's not, it's not the, the, the norm yet. You know, people think, oh, how do you do this, how do you do that? But yet, you guys are starting a new trend. And think about how special that is to be a part of that. A new trend, a new way of learning that's proven to be just as successful as the traditional way of learning. Think about that. And that's, that's obviously due to the hard work of the administrators, the hard work of the staff, the hard work of the teachers. But ultimately, it's because of the hard work of you guys. The fact that you guys are here successful tonight proves that all the hard work that they've done and the hard work that you've done has shown how important it is to get your education and how important it is that this way of learning works. So as I leave you guys here with one last, one last congratulations, you guys can look around the room and realize you made everybody behind me proud. You've made your friends proud. You've made your families proud. Yeah, you got it. You know, you see, you hear the cheers for you guys. You hear your families cheering for you. You've made so many people proud. But most importantly, you've made yourselves proud. And I hope you guys continue, continue pushing forward, continue grinding for what you truly want to do, what you truly love in life, and you'll get there. I promise you, you'll get there. And I'm excited to be a part of this, to see you guys along the way, because, like I said, it's a very humbling honor to be here tonight, to be a part of the class of 2015 because I know you guys are new great things. So once again, congratulations.